You're strolling to the street of your neighborhood, and on your left is green, on your right is green. As you continue walking, in between the green is some yellow and even some brown. This is the usual sight you see in the front yards of your neighbor's homes. But what if instead of green dying lawns, the yards of your neighborhood were filled with bright, lively colors, lush rows of lettuce and herbs, bushels of carrots protruding from the soil, nice, juicy blackberries ripe for the picking, vines upon vines of the happiest, healthiest tomatoes you would ever lay your eyes on. Well, this is a sight that in some neighborhoods that is becoming the usual. I am here today to persuade you to not fill your yard with a lawn, but instead fill that space with a beautiful food garden. Many of you might be thinking, what's so bad about having a lawn, or what in the world is a food garden? I thought the same. I myself grew up in a home with a luscious green lawn in my front yard and backyard. I spent many days running and tumbling around on it as a kid and frolicking through the sprinklers. My neighbors had one, all my friends had one. Lawns were the norm and harmless in my eyes, but that was before my research. Through extensive research, my mind has completely changed on this topic. Now I'll share with you the problem and the solution. The problem is that lawns are a waste of water, a waste of money, and a waste of space. 2014 has become the driest year for California in 119 years. Reported by NBC News, this water crisis threatens to affect everything from food prices to restrictions on water. Already, food prices have raised at the grocery store and water bills are increasing. According to the Sacramento Bee, landscape irrigation accounts for 65% of household water use in the Sacramento area. Lawns are ranked among the thirstiest landscaping, needing two inches of water a week, sometimes more in the warmer months. California's Governor Jerry Brown has asked people to cut back, but there is still a mass amount of water being used. A typical lawn uses as much water as 104 showers, 52 baths, or 52 loads of laundry. So you have to ask yourself, would you rather have clean clothes and clean kids, or a green lawn? According to the University of California's Department of Agriculture and Natural Resources, a 500 square foot of lawn requires 2,800 gallons of water each month, but homeowners sometimes use up to 5,000 gallons for their lawn. A three-person family home uses about 150,000 gallons of water yearly, and 51% of that water is used on the lawn. Los, Re Los Angeles residents use 152 gallons per day. So not only are they a waste of water, lawns are a waste of space. According to the United States Census Bureau, there are 10 million people living in Los Angeles, and there are 3.5 million housing units in Los Angeles alone. As population increases, space decreases. The space that lawns are occupying could be used for multiple other beneficial plants. In Los Angeles, there are over millions of square footage that is occupied by lawns. So not only are lawns a waste of space and a waste of water, they are a waste of money. According to HomeAdvisor.com, in Los Angeles, the maximum cost of a lawn is up to $800. But most homeowners spend $250 to $400 on their upkeep of their lawn. This money could have been put towards something that could benefit you and your family, other than just having an appealing lawn. Americans in total spend $6.4 billion a year on lawn care. With families using 51% of their water usage per year on their lawns, they are throwing hundreds of dollars away on water bills just on their upkeep. Now that I have stated the problem associated with lawns, I will now tell you my solution for this problem. Food gardens. What is a food garden? Food gardens, or urban farming, edible gardens, or sustainable living, it has many names but only has one goal. That is for people to start the practice of growing food wherever they have room to grow it. According to realpharmacy.com, people all over the nation are starting to practice these urban farming techniques and are growing their own food and herbs wherever possible in an attempt to live healthier lives. Food gardens use less water. According to an article written by denverwaterblog.org, How to Grow More and Use Less, reports that hand-watered gardens use an average of 9 gallons of water per square foot compared to that of over 18 gallons per square foot of grass. According to Passionist.org, water harvesting can be done to save water. Water harvesting is the usage of gray water, which is water that has not come in contact with sewage, like water from your sinks, showers, and washing machines. This water can often be used for landscape. Gray water reduces the demand for a new water supply. Laundry water to landscape reuses approximately 3 to 6,000 gallons of water per year, and shower to landscape recycles and saves approximately 5 to 7,000 gallons of water per year per person. Plants in your food garden have deep root systems that allow them to survive the hotter days and not need as much water. Implementing drip irrigation systems throughout your garden will reduce water usage by 50%. So not only do food gardens save you water, they save you money. According to a Gallup poll, the average American spends $151 a week on food, and Americans with higher incomes, $180 a week. According to the National Resource Defense Council, amount of food wasted by an average household of four is estimated to range from $1,300 to $2,200 in annual losses.
Fresh fruits and veggies account for 22% of that weight. With food gardens, you wouldn't be spending that much on groceries per week, and also if you had an overabundance of food, you could share it with your community. If you couldn't share with your community, you could take the rotten food and make it into compost to further enrich your soil to make sure your crops would keep producing bountiful amounts of produce. A typical garden plot can produce more food than one family could eat, which is about 170 pounds. So not only do they save you uh, water and save you money, they use space productively. Food gardens contribute not only to yourself and your community, but wildlife as well. JustFood.ca lists some of the productive things that comes from having a food garden. Productive use of lawn space by growing foods such as vegetables, fruits, and herbs diverts water from grass into something that can be eaten. A very, it's a very safe and healthy way to grow nutritious food with no need for pesticides, herbicides, and chemical fertilizers. It enhances biodiversity and attracts pollinators. It allows for experimenting with varieties of food that cannot typically be found in a grocery store. And it can be used as a tool to educate children about growing their own food and connect them to where their food comes from. If part of the harvest from the garden is offered to those in need through a local emergency food distribution point, it can aid in the overall food security of a neighborhood. Now that you have heard my solution to this problem, I will address some opposing views because I know there will be many. Some of you do not want to get rid of your lawn because you would like a soft place for your kids to play and your dogs to run on. This is very understandable, and I'm not asking you to fully remove your whole lawn, but maybe start with just a portion. Any reduction in your lawn is a positive move in the right direction. Also, according to LAParks.org, Los Angeles alone has over 420 parks and dog parks sprinkled throughout the city. Some of you might be wondering how much this is going to cost you. How much it's going to cost you varies from the size of your garden, if you purchase seeds or seedlings, and how many tools and accessories you're going to need for your garden. According to an article on SparkPeople.com calculating the cost of growing your own food, fertilizing your free so soil costs about $20, and most places will give it to you for free if you can do it yourself. But it's a good idea to start your own compost pile and use leaves, which are free, and in about a year, you won't even need to worry about buying fertilizer. Most seeds cost a couple of dollars for a pack, and each pack usually has 800 to 2,000 seeds. If you use half those seeds, you'll be spending less than $200 than if you had bought those mature veggies in the store. And if you buy organic, that savings skyrockets to $300. So yes, gardening is an investment, but the startup price is worth it for the money. You will be saving growing your own produce. Some of you might be wondering how much time this garden would take. Our time is valuable, and everyone is very busy. With that being said, the hour to two hours you spend in the grocery store and traffic could instead be used to spend time in your garden. Again, the size of your garden definitely influences how much time you should spend in it. But a nice little startup garden would take maybe about 30 minutes of your time a day, maybe an hour. So in conclusion, I have shared with you the problem with front and backyard lawns, the solution which is to replace those lawns with food gardens. Hopefully I have persuaded you to view lawns differently and think about replacing those lawns with your own food garden. You don't have to start with a whole garden, but start with something little, like a potted herb plant, or grab a bucket and fill it with soil and plant tomato seeds. If this idea is adopted by you, you can share with those close to you, and then those close to you can share with others, and so on and so on. Imagine if you and all your neighbors grew your own food, you all would have bountiful amounts of goods and an endless supply of fresh fruits and veggies. The urban farming movement is on the rise, and I hope you decide to join this movement. This is a revolution you should be a part of, so let's connect ourselves to Earth and our food and start growing.